Imagine there's a magical toy store in your neighborhood. This store has several buckets. Each bucket has two kinds of toys. Cars and Barbies in one, Transformers and Superman in another, Batman and Captain Marvel in third, and so on. Anyone can go to the store and swap one toy for another within a bucket. The store is run by a very smart wizard. He uses his wizardry to ensure that the buckets never run out of toys. How does he do that? If someone comes in and lends their toys to the buckets, the wizard rewards them with some candies in return. The number of candy rewards depends on which bucket you lend your toy to. The buckets that contain more popular toys give out more candies and vice versa. For example, the second bucket with Transformers and Superman is the most popular amongst the neighborhood kids and give out 7 candies per week. Bucket 1 on the other hand is not as liked and only gives out 5 candies per day. Now what if I told you that a store like this store actually exists in decentralized finance? Instead of toys, the buckets contain crypto tokens like DAI, USDC, etc. And the candies? Well, people really fight over those candies. Welcome to Lightbulb Moment, a channel dedicated to making animated explainer videos about cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our future videos explaining the mind-bending magic behind the scenes of crypto. If you spent even a little time in DeFi recently, you probably heard the phrase Curve Wars. In this video, we dive into the world of Curve Finance and explore how its genius tokenomics led to these Curve Wars. Firstly, what is Curve? Going back to our analogy from earlier, Curve Finance is the magical toy store we talked about. In crypto terms, Curve Finance is an extremely efficient decentralized exchange or DEX that specializes in low slippage, low fee stable swaps. That definition is a mouthful, so let's break it down. Slippage refers to the price impact from swapping one token for another. For example, if I were to swap $10,000 worth of ETH for DAI on Uniswap, I might receive only $9,900 instead of the entire $10,000. The difference of $100 or around 1% of the initial amount in this case is lost to slippage. But why does slippage happen? To facilitate cryptocurrency exchange trades, most DEXs like Uniswap and SpookySwap use something called a constant product market maker. We won't go into the mathematics behind that complex name, but the important point is this. The constant product algorithm works great when the pool has enough liquidity relative to the total trade size. In our example, imagine if bucket 1 contains 1,000 cars and 1,000 Barbies. If the store used the constant product algorithm, swapping one car for two Barbies would be pretty easy and straightforward. But if you go to the store wanting to exchange 300 cars for Barbies, you would get much less than 600 Barbies in return. In other words, if the trade size is large compared to the total liquidity of a pool, this algorithm leads to really high price slippage. Because DeFi is so young, slippage is very common, especially when swapping on newer chains or swapping lesser known coins with low liquidity. This was a particularly bad problem for stablecoins because slippage made it very difficult to swap one stablecoin for another without losing money. That is, until Curve came into the scene. Curve Finance took the constant product algorithm and improvised it to come up with their own version called the Staple Swap Invariant. Again, the math behind it is a bit too technical for this video, but here's the important thing to know. The Staple Swap algorithm allows Curve to dramatically reduce price slippage for large transactions between stablecoin pairs. When we say dramatically, we really mean it. According to the Curve white paper, the slippage for stablecoin swaps on Curve is typically 100 times lower than a similar trade on Uniswap. This in itself was groundbreaking. But their creativity did not stop here. Let's explore the magic of the toy store. As we know now, the store gives out candies for lending your toys to them. Let's say you have a race car that you don't use anymore. You can go and lend it to Bucket 1 and collect 5 candies from the wizard every day until your race car is stored with him. One day, you go to the store to collect your candies, and the wizard makes you a proposition. If you store your candies with me instead of taking them home, I will give you a magical chocolate. This chocolate has three powers. First, in addition to candies from your bucket, you will get some candies from all other buckets as well, just for holding the chocolate. Second, for as long as you hold the chocolate, you'll get more candies per bucket. And finally... Everyone who holds the chocolate can vote to decide how many candies each bucket gives out. The more candies you lock in with the wizard, the more chocolates you get. More chocolates mean more voting power and more candies. For example, 
If you have two chocolates, you can get 11 candies from bucket one and your vote counts as double. There's one catch though. The magical chocolate disappears linearly over a few days and you lose the powers. To get the powers back, you need to lock in more candies with the wizard. And until the chocolate disappears completely, you cannot get your locked candies back. If you think about it, the wizard has created a flywheel system in the store. You lock in your candies and get some magical chocolates in return. These magical chocolates allow you to earn more candies, but they also disappear over time. So you keep locking in more candies to get magical chocolates and the cycle repeats. Now let's see how this analogy translates to Curve Finance. Like any other DEX, Curve gives out a share of all trading fees of the liquidity providers on its platform. In addition to that, it also gives out its native token, CRV, as a bonus incentive. These CRV tokens are the candies from our story. The tokenomics of the CRV token is genius and it created a new paradigm that many others are following as well. You can lock CRV tokens on the Curve platform from anywhere from 1 to 4 years in exchange for VECRV or voted escrowed CRV tokens. This is the magical chocolate from our example. The longer you lock up CRV for, the more VECRV you get. Each VECRV token burns out of existence linearly over the lockup period, but you can always get more VECRV by locking more of your CRV. Why would you want more VECRV? Because the more VECRV you hold, the more powers you have. First, 50% of the trading fee on curve pools is paid to liquidity providers of the respective pools, and the remaining 50% goes to all the VECRV holders. In other words, you earn passive income for simply holding the tokens. Secondly, the more VECRV you own, the higher your rewards APR. Just like the wizard, Curve has created a flywheel system of tokenomics. You lock in your CRV to get VECRV. VECRV gives you higher returns but also burns out of existence over time. So you lock in more CRV and the loop repeats. So VECRV allows you to boost your rewards while also earning a passive income. But that's not all. Remember how we mentioned that the more popular toy buckets give out more candies? In the case of Curve, popularity is decided by a vote every two weeks. VECRV gives you the ability to vote on which pools CRV rewards are allocated to. The more votes a pool gets, the more rewards liquidity providers will receive. More rewards means more people will stake in that pool, and more stakers would mean more liquidity for those pools. This power is where these VECRV tokens get their name from. Essentially, you escrow your CRV to get voting rights in the platform. In its two years of evolution, DeFi has come to revolve around two things. Liquidity and incentives. Protocols want liquidity for their tokens, and users want incentives to provide that liquidity. A DeFi protocol cannot function without sufficient liquidity. For the 1000s of protocols competing for liquidity, holding the curve voting rights can be the deciding factor in the success of their protocol. This battle to acquire curve tokens and the voting rights that come with them is being termed the curve wars, and it's really heating up. Certain protocols like Convex has gained a massive lead in this battle and are redefining this new DeFi landscape. We will be covering that in another video, so hit the subscribe button to stay tuned. Making this video was a lot of fun for us and we hope you enjoyed it too. Let us know what you think in the comments below.